Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with Ask Adapt, and today's episode is about the uh, therapeutic use of keto, or keto as a therapeutic uh, type of diet. A lot of great interest in the use of keto diets recently with new science emerging. Um, I'd like you to think about it in a way of a what we call the ladder of clinical evidence or hierarchy of clinical evidence. The animal studies may be there in a certain domain, so there may be keto studies for, uh, for mice in, in certain diseases. That doesn't really apply to humans yet. So then when there's human research, so there's pre-human and then human research, there are hu the human studies, including anecdotes of someone's success, which is great, but it really doesn't tell you that it might help someone else. So we, the, we then have case series of say five or 10 people for whom there are benefit of, of anything, including a keto diet. And then there are clinical studies, which are actually formally done with supervision and extra money is added to make sure the measurements are, are good. Um, those could be single arm, meaning just one group, or they could be parallel design randomized controlled trials where you actually have control over who will uh, you let the random uh, control happen of who gets what diet so you can compare the diet or any intervention. And so how do you make sense of all that? <laughs> well, it took me four years of clinical research training to put it into context. And I, as a uh, uh, advisor, will be very specific about where the evidence is coming from. Is it human evidence? Is it pre-human evidence? Is it emerging? Is it something you can use like a prescription for a, a drug? Um, so with that in mind, ketone or keto diets have ample evidence, lots of evidence, as good as a drug approval at FDA for the treatment of obesity, the treatment of diabetes. These are studies that have, are in the literature, randomized controlled trials. Now, the use of keto for epilepsy has been around 100 years. It's been used for, for children with refractory epilepsy. There aren't great randomized trials for that, but you don't need them because there was nothing else that helped these children. So again, if you're gonna be pure and honest about where science is and where it comes from, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, and yet the keto diet is great for a certain type of epilepsy where you can't get the glucose into the brain. So the brain works better on ketones for those people. Um, getting to the questions, uh, Elizabeth said, what are your thoughts on ketone supplements? And are they, they're very popular right now. Are they beneficial or a waste of money? Um, for, for what purpose? Um, and in my world where I'm largely treating people for obesity and diabetes, I don't see a use for exogenous ketones, or it's what they're called, adding ketones, because these products have calories in them. And until the science is there saying they're beneficial for my patients, I'm gonna say, let's just wait. Um, is it worth it for uh, some other reason that you're getting benefit from it if you feel better, things like that. There, you're in that position of, while it might help you, are there any possible harms from it? And so we need to see science on it. It's exciting to see these products. Uh, 10 years ago, everyone thought this wasn't possible. So, um, but I would say wait for the treatment of diabetes and obesity um, until we have more information. John says, how do you do keto without getting gallstones? I uh, don't really wanna have my gallbladder removed. Well, that's, uh, I don't see that keto causes gallstones. Um, if, you're, if you've been following a low fat diet and your gallbladder hasn't been contracting, you may have developed a gallstone. And then now that you're eating more fat, the gallstone may come out as a result of it, but it wasn't created by the diet. So that's a little more complicated, John. I don't see any problem uh, with uh, people doing keto and gallstone disease. Um, Karyani says, um, uh, what is the science regarding inflammation in the body and nutritional ketosis? Well, the um, studies have been done and the best review papers are done by Jeff Volek, V-O-L-E-K. If you go to pubmed.org uh, and type in Jeff Volek and look up some of his review papers, inflammation goes down and that is measured in terms of blood markers. Uh, but in a clinical setting, people just tell me 
the, the symptoms are, have improved of joint pains, muscle pains. Um, there's a question here also um, uh, about chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and that's an interesting one because that can actually get better too. And if it's related to inflammation, um, then that would be the possible cause for that. Um, Courtney says, can you provide any specific info on keto diets for autism? And there's another question on autism um, from Floyd. Um, this is a tough one. Um, it's hard to do research on autism. There are a lot of people saying their, their approach works and it's hard to get studies on it. Um, uh, I, I really don't know uh, about that. I've had patients come to me or parents of, of children with autism say they see clinical improvements. And so we're at that stage of there are some reports of that happening. Is there a science uh, a study about it? Not that I'm aware of yet. Um, and keep aware of the date of this uh, video because as time change, another thing I'm seeing is people read or watch a video from two years ago of what was said and things change. This is why it's an emerging field of science and you have to keep up on it or, or just go to a trusted source. Um, uh, a good question Polly asks, but what about the different vitamins? Vitamin K2, vitamin D, vitamin A? You know, I'm not a big vitamin guy. <laughs> um, I, there are those who are, doctors even, and um, I'm impressed by, uh, or I, I have been hedging the need for vitamins by staying to real foods. So I think you only get into trouble with vitamin deficiencies if you're on different medications, if you have other medical diseases that might have interfered with vitamin absorption, like uh, bariatric surgery is a big example for that. Uh, and if you're not eating real foods, meaning meats and vegetables and uh, the way you know Mother Nature prepared food for us, I don't really worry about the, these vitamins. These are, these are new discoveries. That doesn't mean that they haven't been there all along. So just because there's a new discovery, it doesn't mean you have to add it in, which is a common mistake I see. Um, if you stick to real foods, I, I've always thought that, you know, there are lots of things we don't know about vitamins. They're being discovered all the time. Why not stick to food that's been around a while? Now, if new evidence comes out saying that at a human level that these vitamins, adding them back in or at a certain level is helpful, then that would be a different um different issue, but I don't see that science yet. Um, what about other therapeutic problems like psychiatric problems, epilepsy? Um, do these require different approaches? But th not necessarily. The fundamental idea of keto is turning your body mainly into a fat burning machine, turning your body into burning fat, which is taking away the damage, the inflammation of burning sugar. So it's less harmful less uh, uh, oxidative stress to burn fat in your body than burning sugar. Um, psychiatric problems are at, at my, in my mind at an anecdotal level. There are some published anecdotes. We have a couple uh, and I certainly have people telling me that they are better. I've seen some people not get better. So until further science is there about psychiatric problems, I would say I don't know, uh, but why not try it? I haven't seen any harmful effects, uh, but that might happen as well. Um, what about Alzheimer's and then uh, LADA I'll talk about as well. Um, Alzheimer's is in that area of it's emerging science at the animal level. Uh, it's very fascinating. It's not ready for prime time in humans because the studies haven't been done to show that it's beneficial. Um, that said, I would have no problem having someone doing keto for Alzheimer's or another related condition, uh, cancer. I would have no problem with that, but I can't say that it's definitely going to help. So those studies haven't been done for Alzheimer's and cancer, and they have been done for type 2 diabetes and obesity. So it's important to keep those separate. The final one, uh, late, uh, latent on, um, onset of diabetes, uh, latent autoimmune diabetes, excuse me, LADA, is fascinating. Um, it's a uh, kind of emerging diagnosis that it's being defined over time. Um, if you're able to, if you have that diagnosis and you, you are making insulin, by you can find out by 
measuring the C peptide in the blood, it's possible that you'll be able to reduce insulin and as you reduce the carbs and perhaps even get off the insulin if you keep the carbs really low. Um, the only way to know is to try it and to be measuring it very carefully. Um, the endocrinology world doesn't really understand the relationship between carbohydrate in the food and the insulin and how these things are dynamic and actually how the pancreas can start secreting insulin again. Uh, the only way to know if it will work for you is to try it. And if you don't know what you're doing, do it with someone, a physician who knows about it. Um, so that's, uh, as of today, the therapeutic use of keto. Um, just stepping back, I think this is healthy eating for anyone. It's just taking out the, the sugars uh, or compli complicated sugars called starches. Um, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us so you don't miss out on future episodes and um, click sub subscribe. Send your comments below. I'll do the best I can um, and my team will reply as best we can. Um, again, hope that's helpful.